Well, I think the first thing to to suggest is that you know everyone seems to think that oh, if I have a press credential, then um, you know that that'll get me what I need. And and the fact of the matter is is that that's that you know in some instances that's true. And certainly a press credential in this case would kind of get you, you know, 100 feet from the swearing in or from the action. But beyond that, you know, the, the key really is to – is to is there are so many stories out there. I mean, think about the notion of, you know, uh, you know for conversation's sake, you know, a 70-year-old African-American woman who suffered through the, the – um, uh, through, through the civil rights movement and – and for her to now experience, uh, you know, the you know the presidency of an African American, has got to be a remarkable thing yes. for her. I mean, for someone in my shoes or someone in your, you know your age, the idea of an African American president is great, and we're happy about it. But it doesn't have the same weight as someone who suffers through the civil rights movement and so forth. So. Uh, on both sides. I mean, I think there are countless really amazing potential story ideas. And, you know, the thing to do would be to, you know, if at all possible, to make outreach to a family or to in that situation that's planning on going down and kind of follow them through their day. That's an amazing potential picture story that more than one person could do, but they could really tell the story without ever having to have access. Okay. Yeah. Now, separate from that kind of you know story ideas is logistics. Since you don't have credentials, the key is going to be to get down there early. And if the gates open at you know uh, 8 a.m. Um, for the parade that's going to happen at 2:30, yeah. then you need to be getting to those those turnstiles at 6 a.m. Wow. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of situations, I mean, like, even a credentialed photographer who has a position right on Freedom Plaza um, is going to get there that early and sit around all day long for, you know, one picture as the limousine goes by, you know. And... My suggestion would be, logistically, the likelihood that the that the president is going to get out of his limousine is very low early on in the parade and will increase cl the closer the parade gets to the White House. Okay. I would expect, and I'm prepared to be wrong about this, but I would expect that the, um, that the president will get out of the limousine Somewhere in between the Treasury Department and, you know, the Bank of America, right there, you know, as 15th Street becomes Pennsylvania Avenue. So, and mo much of those area, those areas are are um, bleacher seats. But if they, you know, but if there is some standing room there, you know, trying to get into those areas is going to increase the likelihood that, you know, your person or you know people are going to be able to get pictures there at the um there in that area um so that's one potential idea now you know just because you're making pictures of the president you you also don't want to neglect pictures of the parade going by the floats the pageantry and so forth i mean that's important and, and it, it's a portion of the story and everyone gets caught up in oh my gosh pictures of the president well, yes, absolutely, it's a, that's, a, that's a component of it, but there's so much more to be gotten. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So uh, that would be the first thing. The second thing is to, um, log from a logistic standpoint, is it's going to be cold. Make sure that you have an extra battery. If you don't have an extra battery, don't sit there for three hours with – your camera sitting there with the battery out in the cold. Take the battery out of the camera and put it right up against your right against your body, right against your skin. You know, the warmest place on your body is your armpit. As silly as it sounds, put it in your armpit. Keep that battery for that camera warm. Because as batteries get cold, they die. And if you only have one, 
you want, you want to make sure it's charged and you want to keep it next to your body and take it out, you know, you, you know, a, a, you know, right at the beginning. Okay. Or take it out, use it, and then put it back in your underneath your arm. Okay. Um, and whoever has, like, make sure that you bring enough memory cards because you're going to shoot more than you think. The other thing, if you're in a, you know, there's porta potties everywhere, but the challenge you're going to face, you know, they can make sure that they do not, you know, take with them a bottle of water and just sit there and sip it because in six hours it's going to pass through their body and they're going to have to go. And so, you know, minimize the consumption of, of liquids during that time. You know, eat a, eat a good meal beforehand, uh, but not, to, you know, eat a big meal the night before, a really big meal, prep, preferably like pastas and stuff like that. I mean, like if you talk to athletes, pastas and other, other things like that will help you with your, um, with your strength and your endurance. I know it sounds silly, but you are going to be there for a long period of time, and you don't want to get hungry. You know, so if you do get hungry, instead of, like, bringing a sandwich, bring something that's full of nutrients, you know, power bar or something like that, and use that and but do everything you can to not get hungry so that you don't, you know, and or eat, and then you have to go to the bathroom or, you know, then you're drinking something. I mean, you're not going to drink because you're parched. You might drink because you're bored, and if you're parched, just drink enough to quench your thirst. Don't, you know, don't take big swigs or don't drink because you got nothing better to do. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to, if you have a, a full collection of lenses from wide angle to zoom, that's what you want to bring. Um, and, you know, the word, and the other thing is look to juxtapose things in the parade with things around you. So don't just zoom in on the presidential limousine or don't zoom in on the parade float going by, do it with and juxtapose the, um, you know, the parade with the buildings and surrounding environment. Um, what other things? Dress warm in layers, preferably. Um, definitely wear long johns or some long underwear. Um, because, you know, when you're in, even when it's cold and you're like walking around campus or something like that, um, you know, y y because you're working and you're active, it's not as cold. But after you're sitting there for two hours doing nothing and your body is not moving, it's going to get cold. So, you know, wear long johns, wear jeans. And if you have a pair of snow pants, a pair of snow pants, you're going to be sitting there for a long time. You want your body to be able to self-sustain its heat. You know, definitely like one or two hats, definitely gloves. Now, bring some, like, you know how you have those, like, liner gloves? Yeah. Okay, liner gloves, but then also mittens. Now, I know this sounds silly that you might think you need mittens, but the problem with, with gloves is that your fingers have to then individually keep themselves warm. If you have a mitten and you have your hand in there by itself, all your fingers and your hand will, will generate heat inside the mitten. Okay. So you could get liners that are gloves that you wear while you're taking pictures, but you have like mittens or, or you know, when, when, you're, uh, um, when you're sitting around waiting. You know, nine, you know it's, it's all about getting there and getting in position. It's, you know, taking the pictures is not the hard thing. The hard thing is all the logistics that, that kind of get up to it. Um, the other thing to take note of is that, you know, once the parade organizers determine that, the, you know, the area is full, they're going to shut the magnetometers down. They're not going to keep letting people in. So, you know, one, if you get someone, and, and they're going to do that in waves, though. So if, like, one magnetometer is closed, you could go to another one. All right. Um, I think that pretty much covers all our bases. Well, um, thank you very much, John. No problem. Call if you need it. anything else. Okay, I definitely will. Okay, thanks. No problem.